Hey everyone, it's Livewire or Squiggly McPickens. In this video, we'll be going over the neck wrap or suicide wrap. This video is part two of neck spins and wraps. So if you haven't watched my video on neck spins yet, check it out first as it's the prerequisite for this move. This is an introduction to neck wraps and I'll be covering different transitions in later videos. So definitely smash that subscribe button to stay up to date. A basic neck wrap will have the same initial entry that the spin did. The difference being that a wrap closes or is fully closed around a body part, whereas a spin is not. Because we are focusing on a neck wrap, you might have heard the term suicide wrap. This comes from the rope dart world. A suicide wrap covers the throat, which is a vulnerable part of your body. This is something you're probably unlikely to be doing as a defensive move, as you're putting yourself in danger. A suicide wrap speeds up faster, as it also tightens more around the throat when it gets shorter. Hence the name suicide. When doing the wrap, we go back to the same two points. Where along the length of your whip that you want that body part to intercept its path, and how far around the circumference of a body part it travels before you respond with an action. In the case of a wrap, unlike a spin, it's actually going to travel the full circumference around the body part. And because it has further to travel, you'll want a longer whip or more length after the point of contact. You'll need enough length for it to continue the wrap around the body part or past the point of contact. Keep it long at first so it doesn't accelerate faster than you're comfortable with. Instead of taking action when you feel it first connect with your neck, wait a longer amount of time for it to close over your throat and start its rotation around your neck again. This is your cue to tip back and send it behind you, just like you did with the spin. When doing wraps, ensure your whip is long enough. I have just long enough length and time to complete a wrap with a four foot whip. Getting shorter than that, you run the risk there's not enough fiber length before the handle makes it to your head. So test it out with your soft prop. Your whip's rotation can be slowed by dipping your head down when you feel your handle on the way down. Go with it as it rotates towards the ground and it will loosen tension on the whip, stalling it from your perspective. Then tip your head back as it crosses in front of your feet and is heading on the way back up. The term double wrap is actually referred to as a stacked wrap and the term double wrap has often been applied to what is just a wrap. A stacked wrap is executed twice or more over before unwinding. No more than twice with a six foot length. You could stack more with a rope dart, which is between 10 to 15 feet in length. Stacking wraps can be done around other body parts, not just the neck. So what I'm showing here is called a stacked neck wrap or stacked suicide wrap. Now that you have a sense of what the differences are between a spin and a wrap, you'll have a much easier time trying out variations and using other parts of your body. So that's a wrap. Yes, I'm that cheesy. I wanna say a huge thank you to my friend at Rope Dartist for all his help in making this video happen. He has extensive rope dart skill and knowledge. He's a rope dart academy instructor and just general ninja badass. So definitely go check him out. I'll drop a link in the description to his profile. We'll be looking at many variations of wraps and spins, so don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button if this helped you out and share it with your light whipping flow mates. Hit me with a comment if there's any moves you'd like to see me cover. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the electric jungle.